the Bulls versus the Bears. Get in the game. www.tackletrading.com Hello, everybody. This is Coach D with TackleTrading.com. I want to do a quick uh, video lesson for you that I think you will absolutely appreciate it, and I think you'll really enjoy um, this. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the content from the newsletter this week, and some of the things that I put in there are actually really quite powerful, probably the most powerful information that I think I've ever put up on the newsletter, that's for sure. Um, talking a little bit about the seasonality and how we can use that to potentially create the cash flow and the growth that we want. Now, I've got this chart of 78 years of S&P history, and you'll notice that some of the best months are April, and we see that that's a you know, seasonal spike. If you kind of come down and look at the performance on the 20 years, so I'll show you where I got this here in a minute. This is a chart I pulled from Thinkorswim using their seasonality function in 20 years of history. And if you look at their 20 years of history, I mean, really, you're talking about the modern Internet age of the trading and even less than that, technically. But you can see where consistently from March, April through May, you get a strong run in the market. And the S&P is really heavily weighted to energy. And then you'll see, again, very strong run through the fourth quarter through December, starting in September, usually after that lull somewhere in October and that end of September, October scenario. So right now, the opportunity here, this is looking at all these two graphs here, here looking at all of the sectors, um, ETF sectors, the spider ETF sectors, and across the board, all of them performed this time of year through March and April, April over the last 15 years. So again, same type of thing with standard deviations, the performances here. And here is, a, again, a graph of all of the S&P ETF, um, the sector ETFs showing you that how they perform over the year. Now, you really have to kind of expand this one out and go full screen to really appreciate it. But what you'll see is the hottest time of year across the board is this area here through March and April. April being the highest point you get in the market, and that comes with energy. At, um, you get uh, basic materials, energy. Actually, the financials, and the big one here is the industrials. And that's kind of a seasonal play that we look to every year. Now, if we go and look at some of the data and information that we have here, and we look at the, um, these are just a couple that are broken down a little bit so you can see it. We look at some of these sectors and how they perform, like the energy sector, for example, the hottest month for that is, is March. Now let me zoom in on this here. Actually, I take that back, it's April. I've got to look at the scale on the left. This little graph right here is a money maker. So you come in here and we're looking at the basic material sector, best month, April. Uh, energy sector, base, base, basically the best months are March and April. So if you kind of look here, what we're looking at here is the scales over here on the, on the left, and then we're looking at that little graph right there showing top performing months. So the worst month across the board for most of them is, is September. Not all of them, but that's pretty consistent. Now, you see that that March and April spike is, is again, something we can look to to actually formulate a trading agenda or an opinion. So let's go back in here, and I want to talk to you a little about one of the plays I talked about, the energy and oil play. And again, you can come back and look at March um, through April, and we're seeing that the number two is energy, and number number two here, or number one in April is industrials. So this would be a very strong sign for us, again, that probably we look to energy. Now, um, I talked about my seasonal oil play, and Joe Nee made a very um, astute observation that perhaps this year the energy play might not work, and that's certainly possible, to which I created a little bit of response. But I wanted to show you a chart of the energy sector. This is the XLE, and what you have set up right here is let me grab a better looking chart than this one. Let me go grab. I got some pretty good looking charts here on options dynamic. And uh, let me go pop in here to the XLE. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about the pattern you see here is a triple bottom reversal, a breakout, a retracement, which would be if this is a, you're counting Elliott waves, this is your first wave breakout. This is that kiss hello zone where old resistance could become new support, and it is poised for the run. And here we are right into March, and so you can see the actual institutions. Let me show you some of the volume here. 
analysis, you'll see spikes in volume coming in on the support zone. So there's institutional buyers in here. And I've got a cool little volume analysis indicator that takes that volume and averages it out. And it shows me that we see, we're seeing a shift from negative money flow volume to positive money flow and volume. This is where a lot of your classic indicators come in, like your moving averages crossing over, a 20 crossing a 50. For example, that's showing that first breakout to the upside. If we go down and look at like a MACD and a stochastics, we'll see some, some pretty good looking setups here. The stochastics would show me short term oversold, looking for that hook. And then the, the MACD is going to be divergent and giving that buy signal. So here's the divergence on the MACD where you can see, you know, it looks like the market's trending down here, but the, the peaks, or the, excuse me, the valleys are getting higher through here. And it's given us a double bar cross on the daily time frame. Even if we were to switch this out to a weekly time frame, you'll see that MACD is just given a buy signal. Now, that's the double bottom here on the weekly chart. There's a moving average and, a, and basically a bullish retracement. So it is set up to run. And now, Joni, I would, I would actually question the same thing myself. Is this the year it's going to run? The oil glut, um, the huge amount of inventory certainly could, could weigh in on this. But seasonally, I think that they're at least attempting to run the play as, as is. It's just like, again, a football team. They might have gone to this play many, many, many times, but they're going you know, to go for it one more time um, because it is what they are conditioned to do and what they've learned to do and they may or may not understand the potential risk that the oil glut and the Saudis having their um, pumps cranking out all the time and all of the offshores uh, you know uh, tankers are just kind of parked off there they don't want to bring it in because there's so much inventory so the, it's set up to run and if it fails that's okay this is where maybe putting in a risk a less risky trade where you have fixed risk would come in handy or position sizing to your comfortable risk size. Um, I want to show you now one of the coolest tools that I've come across in a long time. And actually, it was taught this. I learned this from Tim, um, Coach Justice, Tim Justice. We got the just I, actually. I like that. And one of the things that I, I've, you know, I, this is something I've used for years, but I didn't know that Thinkorswim had this tool. And so I used to do this manually through a different, bunch of different platforms, including like Excel and, and you know exporting data, and it was quite the quite the pain to come up with this. If you go to the chart and you go to the style and you click on it and you come down to their chart modes, they actually have a seasonality mode, which is a forward look based off of history. Now the line over here on the left, you have to kind of come in and pick how much time you're looking at, and so you can go in and say, well, I want to see five years, ten years, you know, twenty years. We can go to a twenty-year daily or a twenty-year monthly. If we go to a twenty-year monthly, what we're going to get now? One of the issues we're going to have here is that the data is really skewed because the XLE is at seventy-eight and it's historically been down in the fifties. But that being said, what I can do is zoom in on the data, and we can kind of get rid of the current pricing, which will fix that scale up for us. So we can kind of come in and again do that little zoom scenario. Oops. Let's see if it'll zoom in on it. It's not playing nice for me. Let me switch it to the daily. It'll work a little bit better for us. We'll go 20 year daily. And again, now we can actually see the graph a little bit better. And let's see if I can get that to zoom in for us. Okay, that should export or eliminate the, the higher point data point. So now we can see that this is how it behaves through early March all the way through April out through May. And this is, again, a seasonal play that we look to. And this is 20 years of the XLE, the, you know, the, the spider sector ETF for energy. And it's, again, poised to run. So I could actually trade the actual ETF itself, or I could go pick the best stocks from the group. Now, if you come in and look at it, it's trading here at 78. And if you're expecting a third wave, let me show you how to forecast out a third wave. You use a Fibonacci extension, and you would come from the beginning or the start of this first wave, which actually starts down here, and it's got a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5, followed by an A, a B, and a C. So that's really a full Elliott wave setup. And you start from the bottom of that move, and you draw it to the top of the move. That's the measurement of the first wave. Now, the first wave is not usually the biggest wave. The biggest wave is usually the third wave. And I am making an assumption that this is the support zone. It's kind of looking like support, but it's not technically a support zone yet. Now, if we get the same distance run, we'll see it run towards 84. If we get a full wave three, 161.8% extension, our target's going to be out here at 88. You'll notice that coincides, that both of these targets coincide with former support 
and resistance zones, that's not a coincidence. That's really just how, how the symmetry of the market works, what I refer to as market geometry. The Elliott wave pattern is, again, kind of a general statement. It's kind of a hasty generalization, but the, I like the geometry of it. And when you see a third wave, it's usually a bigger wave. And so I would say we have an extended target. Now, that's optimistic in assuming the play pans out. Even if the play starts to run and then fails, there's potential for us to make some money. So I would consider trades on this like long calls, bull call debits, legging into bull call debits, starting out with long calls, or even something along the lines of a back ratio. Now I'm not sure I can pull off a, a really good back ratio because that's always contingent on the option pricing, but we could certainly take a look at it. And what I would do for a back ratio is I'd go longer term because I need to have this through May at least, so I can go through those June options. And you have to look at the prices and kind of say, okay, one of the things I look to do is I look to sell an in the money option to get the cash to go buy at least two or more out of the money options. And in my general rule set, it has to be within one potential average yield of the actual price movement. So I look at one small swing for this and it's like 72 to 78. You know, typical swings for this particular stock, 100 down to 96, that's four points. Um, 98 down to 93, again, that's five points. You see, uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller move. 84 out to 89, you're talking about, again, a four to five point move. So a four to five point move up means I could look to buy 82s or 83s. And a four to five point move down would be, you know, putting us down towards that 70. 273 ballpark 73 down there 70 you know four so i really wouldn't ever expand my back ratio outside of one pay range and that's one of the things i try to look for is is what kind of deltas i can get okay we're going to come in and look at a june back ratio and on a june back ratio i'm going to come into the june option now i got to go out to june so i have enough time for this to work and i'm going to come in and and i'm going to look to sell an in the money option in order to buy an out of the money option. And I'm gonna try and buy more of those out of the money as I can. Now I'm gonna to look to sell an in the money delta, take the cash, and go try and get as many out of money deltas as I can to overpower this particular delta, the short delta. I need to buy enough of the long deltas to make this trade work. So here I'm kind of looking at the premiums for that the June. We can go in here and I can look for about $7 and the $73 calls. And those $83 out of the money is gonna cost me around a buck six, buck 70, 75 in there, somewhere in that ballpark. And so if we go in here and we go right click, buy back ratio, and I go choose my prices, sell the 73, and I come out and I buy the 70, 83. We're talking about five points up, five points down. And I can get about five of those, maybe four, Four would give me a 49 cent credit. So I'm selling a negative 72, and then I'm buying a positive 31 on the delta. So four times 31 is gonna put us out at positive 120, um, four, and then minus 72 is how that risk graph is going to look. So if we were to go analyze that, let's go analyze that trade, and come in and look at the risk graph here. April sure are attractive. June's look great. Okay, boom. So this is kind of how the risk graph looks. It's, you have, it's kind of slow out of the gates because the deltas are, are inefficient at first. If it runs to the upside and gets out towards our extended targets, which I think the extended targets put you clear out at 88, you're going to have a sweet return on the trade versus if it runs down, you're going to have some limited risk and it's very, very forgiving to the downside. So I'm going to go kind of set the two break even points on here. I'm going to go reset the price slices here and we'll go grab one and I'm going to set it on the break even point to the downside which I'll just go ahead and set it to the strike price rather than the break even point and then on the break even point to the upside now this is by expiration between now and Ju now in June and what we're basically stating is that go set the slices to this chart is that I believe that this is going to be running up or down if it fails if it runs up and gets out to our target ballpark that's assuming it goes clear through june now i don't expect it to take through june i expect this to run from now through april um, and maybe take a month to cover that distance as it would have you know from here to here that's a similar ballpark if we get the full extended run by by april is when i'd be looking at that now time is the enemy of this um, trade and uh, decreasing volatility hurts this trade 
Direction helps. If it's moving, we want this to move up or down. I don't care which way it goes. If it moves up, we got some huge upside potential and we would be looking in a pretty good spot. If it moves down, it can't hurt us too bad. And we have some adjustments that we can take on the trade to even you know, walk away from the trade to the downside. If it runs down, we would basically balance out the ratio. So you can see the time decay. As time passes, that white line is gonna drop. The longer it takes to move, the less effective the trade is. So it's a, it's a pretty fun trade. I actually can show you this. One of my favorite features of the new Dynamic Trend software is the ability to come in and sit, stick this next to your chart. This is a sweet program I've been having some fun with. So, we can, so again, pick up four of those. And that's kind of what our reward to risk ratio looks like. And I'm going to go ahead down here and show it next to the chart. And we can actually look at what we have here is if it runs up, this is what our risk graph looks like. Break even point, upside potential. If it runs down, this is where we, we'd feel ourselves the pain. So really, if it, if it runs down and keeps going down and breaks below support, no harm, no foul. The downside's not as painful. It's not going to cause you immense amounts of pain. The upside is huge, and then it's unlimited. And if we get out to our extended targets, we've got a really nice gain on our hands. Now, the margin requirement for this is the distance between the two strike prices and the number of contracts that you sell. So we sell one, which creates the obligation, and then we, the one of the ones we buy will be covering that particular one we sold. So selling the 73s and buying the 80s, 83s, there that's 10 points. And so it, the margin requirement would be about, uh, well, it'd be $1,000 minus whatever credit you get. So that back ratio is a pretty fun trade. So let's go ahead and actually create that one and go ahead and submit it. And we'll come back and follow that. So let me go ahead and uh, we'll create the ticket for that. Let me go actually, before I confirm and send, let me actually go edit the trade. So let's go create duplicate order, open up our order ticket. We are going to go with a June 73 by 83, sell one by four. They are telling me we can get a 49 cent credit on that, which would be a nice price for it. I'll take 45 cents, see if we can get filled a little quicker, and I'll make that order good for the day, see if we can get filled on that. And that is a call ratio back spread. It is, again, longer term um, trade. I've got that set up from now through June, but I'm anticipating a run if we get it, and if it fails, no harm, no foul. I'll show you the trade adjustment when we get there. This is Coach D with TackleTrading.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've never done a back ratio before, I absolutely insist that you do it virtually. And you got to trade these virtually to understand what happens when they go good, what happens when they go bad, and what happens when they get ugly. So you have to understand how to manage the trades and practice every strategy um, before you ever attempt to go with live money. See you guys in the clubhouse, and this has been fun. Get off the sidelines and take control of your financial future at www.tackletrading.com. Get in the game.